Bunny must die. It's a truly revolutionary game because it allows you to play as both a bunny girl and a cat girl at the same time. That's good shit right there. The story is a breathtaking piece of literature that should be remembered throughout the ages. Basically, Bunny is cursed with cat ears. And that's it. Move out of the way, Shakespeare. You'll never be as good as this. Once you start the game, you will quickly realize you can only move in one direction. You might try reinstalling the game or replugging your controller. You may even punch your monitor out of pure sexual frustration. Until you figure out that the blatantly obvious gear at the beginning is actually an item that fixes this exact problem. Now that you've officially started your adventure, you'll be able to see all manner of new and exciting worlds, including, but not limited to, generic overgrown ruins, a castle, a cat girl cloning facility that's in the middle of hell, don't think about it, and this giant anal cavity. It's strangely pleasant here. I don't think I like it here anymore. I'm not right, God! At this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, Man, this sounds like some weeaboo degenerate Metroid clone. And that's because it is. There's only two reasons why anyone would want to play this game. One being that it came out in 2006, and as of me working on this video, has become legally unavailable for purchase. Meaning you've got yourself some free shovelware. Or, you want to play this game for the same reason I do. You just really like anything wearing a bunny suit. I've never really heard anyone talk about this game. And when compared to today's more popular Metroidvania titles like Hollow Knight, Bloodstained, and Fortnite, it may be lacking a bit in polish, but it definitely stands on its own and is a classic to the genre. You picked the wrong house, fool! Like most heterosexual women, Bunny's abilities come from one thing. Shoes. This is terrible. She can find anything from running sandals, the high heels that increase her jumping damage, allowing Bunny to appropriately stomp her victims. Bunny can also gain Dr. In Strange Shoes, which allow her to wall jump. You can also use them to wall climb by vigorously spamming the directional button back towards the wall and jumping. Complete. Please help me. You can also pick up time upgrades, which allow you to slow, stop, and reverse time. At best it helps with platforming and dealing with some minor enemies. At worst it... just sort of kills you. Bunny can find a large variety of weapons, ranging from throwing knives which you start off with and will quickly replace forever, to homing missiles that do exactly what you'd expect. Not work at all. However, all of these weapons are garbage. The only good weapon in Bunny Must Die is the sword. And that's not just an opinion, it's a fact. Yes, the other weapons do have their own uses. However, the developers were from Japan. And using their not at all biased heritage, they decided that nothing in this fictional world can compete with Nippon Steel. Just like in real life. The problem with this is that weapon pickups come out of candles you find in the environment. And if you accidentally pick one up, tough shit. You're stuck with it until you find a new one. Or, use my personal solution. Restart the game. The boss fights in Bunny Must Die feel fantastic, and vary drastically from a giant cat to a vampire with a gun for a head who kills you by flashing you. Yes, this is a real thing. All the boss fights feel pretty unique and hit that perfect mark of being just challenging enough, but not rage inducing. Except this guy. This guy can go fuck himself. The boss dialogue is also just 
really, really stupid humor. And I personally love it. All your base are belong to us. Overall, I definitely recommend you play through the game. Especially now that it's free. Just make sure you mute Bunny if you want to keep your sanity. I didn't. Once you beat the game, you unlock a new game. Chelsea and the Seven Devils. Where you play as Chelsea. Some girl you see every now and then. You still play through the same game, but traversing it is entirely different due to the new mechanics and mobility Chelsea has in comparison to Bunny. And by that I mean, Chelsea has a ladder. This is her mobility. Or at least until she learns how to fly. But that doesn't mean the ladder becomes useless, because it's also the single hardest hitting attack in the game. I love this game. Chelsea also has a ton of new collectibles and bosses to fight, so it's definitely worth a playthrough. Especially if you care about the masterpiece ending the story has to offer. Spoilers, it's just a Toho reference. Alright, so, I'm really sorry this video took literally six months for me to make. I had rewritten and re-recorded it so many times that I practically lost count. However, if you want to see the last version of this video, and in my opinion a much more boring and bland one, the link's in the description. I'm not really happy with it, but I had this one saved, so if you want to check it out, why not? Anyway, more videos on the way, so stay tuned. I've got two more that should be coming out soon. Which means three or four months, but you know, whatever. Big Yoshi.